post. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, last night, Nicola said that fighting has become a part of your guys' organization um, and that he, you guys tend to get on people's nerves. How much do you appreciate that that has become your identity over these last couple of years? Yeah, I, I think being a fighter, you know, being a competitive team, uh, being a, a team that is just unwilling to fold uh, and give in uh, is a, a tremendous uh, identity to have. You know, obviously the playoffs are always hard. Uh, no matter who you're playing, it's always a challenge to try to win four games. And uh, I think the last three years have been a lot of fun. And if we're able to get under people's skins while doing so, uh, you know, so be it. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I, I just love the res resiliency of our group, Mike. Uh, I love our mental toughness, our approach, and and always finding ways. You know, the, the neat thing was that after the game last night, I got a text from Jamal Murray, and so on the bus from the arena back to the hotel, I gave him a call, and hearing how excited and pumped up Jamal was for us, his teammates, the team and how proud he was. Uh, it was really a great moment. And it made me think like, you know, yeah, we're fighters. Yeah, we got people's skin, but uh, we have a tremendously close knit group. And, you know, Jamal's back in Denver, <clears throat> excuse me. He's back in Denver rehabbing. Um, he didn't make the trip to Portland. Uh, some guys in that situation would feel like, oh, I'm not part of it, I'm not there. Uh, he was on cloud nine, how ex I could feel his emotions, his excitement for the team. And uh, and I love that about our group, how we truly care about each other. And, and that's a big part of the culture that we have here in Denver. Mark Medina, USA Today. Hi, Michael, good to see you. Um, I got a two-part question here on Faku. What do you remember what your in initial impressions of him seeing him over the years in international basketball? And since he joined you guys, what have you gotten a deeper appreciation for him now that you've coached him and, and got to know him? Yeah, I mean, the thing that always uh, stood out to me when watching Faku over the years, uh, just as a fan of the game, uh, whether it be playing and representing his country, Argentina, or playing over in the EuroLeague for Real Madrid, um, I always had a tremendous amount of respect for his passion, the passion he played the game with, um, and his toughness. Uh, and that was always on display whenever you watched him, whatever setting it may be. That has definitely carried over to the NBA. Uh, when he first got here, I had a very simple message for Faku. He said, don't change. Just because you've gone from the EuroLeague and the ACB to the NBA, uh, don't change who you are. Don't change your approach. Don't change how you play. I want you to be Faku Composo. And, uh, and he, I think he appreciated that. And he's done just that. He's come here and played his game at a high level. And um, I never envisioned that to be a starting point guard in the playoffs because you never envision the injuries that we've had. But um, he's not afraid. And that, that's probably, uh, you can see that from afar, but when you're in a foxhole with a guy and you see him every day, uh, you see his work ethic, his preparation, uh, his toughness, um, but the fact that he's not afraid, he goes out there and leaves it all on the line every single night. Uh, you just have a tremendous amount of respect for a player uh, with that kind of a mindset every single day. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, Nicola was a second round pick. Monte was a second round pick. Austin, you guys pulled off the street when he was out of a job. Uh, and he's obviously been appreciative of that. So often players talk about how opportunity is key finding the right opportunity why is it so many guys have found the right opportunity under your staff and with this team over the last couple of years yeah well I think one you know Tim Conley and, and our front office uh do an amazing job uh, of drafting a Nicole Jokic 41st uh you know taking Monte Morris late in the second round as a two-way uh Tory Craig's Marcus Howard's Shaq Harrison, Austin Rivers, the list goes on and on and on to your point. Um, and then once the front office has done their job, then now it's on me and our staff to make sure that we're helping these guys develop, improve, get better. Um, 
and then putting them in situations. Uh, you know, I, I think experience is the best teacher. And a lot of the guys that you mentioned have been given a chance to play. And you can do all the player development workouts you want, but if you don't get a chance to put those into action in real game situations, you know, you're going to be a player development player. And, uh, and our guys have gotten that chance to play. So it's something we take uh, an immense amount of pride in developing every player, whether he's a lottery pick, a second round pick, or a two-way player. doesn't matter. If you come into our gym, we take a lot of pride in trying to develop all of our players so they can become better and ultimately help our team win at a high level. And I think we've seen that across the board in the six years that I've been here. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, anytime a role player kind of steps up and has a big game like Austin did last night, it's, you know, something to celebrate. But how just much more special is it just knowing the year that he's been through and uh, just the whole kind of arc of his almost kind of redemption story there? Yeah, I mean, it's um, obviously winning game three on the road. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tough, tough task. Um, got off to a slow start. Finished the game. You know, they scored, I think, 12, or three, uh, 12 points, four threes, and 43 seconds to close to make that game a lot more interesting than it should have been. But regarding Austin, yeah, I think uh, we all take, take great satisfaction in watching him have the game that he had and knowing, as I told our team after the game, that he was sitting at home for two and a half months. And, you know, I'm sure during that time, Austin did a lot of soul searching and he had the courage to look himself in the mirror you know he, he wasn't just going to place blame elsewhere we've had a couple of conversations about this and you know it, it was kind of uh probably in hindsight now a, a positive you know because maybe he was at a crossroads and uh he's owned up to him having to be the best version of himself not just on the court but off the court in the locker room and he's done that since he's been here austin rivers before he scored 16 points in the fourth quarter, has been a great addition, a positive addition to our team, to our culture, to our locker room. And just so thankful that he's here and he had the game that he had. And I think every one of his teammates was really happy for him knowing his story. And uh, hey, we still have a lot of work to be done. So uh, we're not celebrating, we're not sitting here uh, thinking that we've done anything. Uh, this series is a long ways from being over. G Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, I'm going to piggyback off of Matt's question a little bit because I asked Aaron Gordon about your Statue of Liberty comment and why this franchise gets the best out of whatever players you guys have. And he complimented the coaching staff. He pointed out you guys and said that the way that you guys invest in your players uh, makes them believe in themselves. And I'm just, what is it about your staff that is able to give that gift to your players, the ability to believe in themselves out there? Yeah, I think, you know, the ability to uh, empower people um, is, is a really powerful thing um, you know, to make guys, to give them confidence, Katie, to, to make them feel like they are a big part of what we're trying to accomplish, to give them a voice. Uh, I, I think uh, myself and the entire coaching staff do a really good job of communicating, spending time with our players. You know, player development is not just getting on the court and working on uh, a skill set. It's also spending time off the court and, and, and taking a vested interest uh, in this person's life, not just as a basketball player, but as a young man. Uh, and, and I think that's something that we do a good job of. And, and that's something that we make sure that we spend time doing because that's so important. Players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And uh, for a new player like Aaron or Austin or JaVale or Shaq, uh, open lines of communication uh, always make players feel more welcome um, and, and like they're a part of it. And, and, and I love that about our group. It's, it, it runs through the whole organization from top to bottom. And that's why when guys come into this team from outside, I think sometimes they're taken aback a little bit because we are not your typical NBA team. How we run things, how we do things, the relationship from Josh and Stan Cronky down to Tim Conley and myself, uh, the whole staff, you know, we have a very, very close and connected group. 
And I think you've seen that, you know, through, through all the years that I've been here. Brandon Cristal, KOA. Yeah, Coach, when Jamal got hurt, you said you weren't worried about offense. And last night, Austin had a huge game. I imagine, are, are you just happy? As long as there's a third score, you're not planning on it to be the same guy every night after after Nicola and MPJ. You know that it'll be somebody, and you just, you know, it just depends on a given night, the hot hand guy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a deep team, and with the way we move the ball, you know, obviously I think we only had 24 assists last night, uh, which is a low number for us. Um, but with how we play, uh, the ball is going to find the open man. Uh, the fact that we made 23, we had nine guys, nine different players make a three last night. Um, you know, our third scorer is the open man. You know, you know what you have in Nicole Jokic. You know that Michael Porter is going to be a guy that we run a lot of plays for, get him looks. You know, after that, you know, Faku, Austin, uh, Monte, Paul, Jermichael, uh, whoever it is, you know, the, but the ball will find the open man. And that's a big part of the culture and identity that we have, especially on the offensive end of the floor, is just being unselfish and making the right play. And when that happens, you know, uh, good things usually happen for you. Last night, we were able to make those threes. And, you know, hopefully that's the same uh, for tomorrow afternoon when we play game four. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Mark Medina from USA Today. Hey, Michael, another thing on Faku here, beyond the things that you mentioned about what makes him such a great player, why do you think he's been able to make the transition so well, particularly given the circumstances of being in a new country and, you know, the, the uniqueness of this season with all the limitations, with the protocols and opportunities to team build and all that? Yeah, I, I think uh, one, uh, probably the biggest reason is, you know, starting off the year, I challenged our returning players to openly embrace their seven new teammates. You know, we, we had seven new guys join our team at the start of this season. And it was not just on the coaches, but it was going to be on the returning players, our core group, uh, to make sure these players were embraced and felt a part of it in a very unique season. Shortest training camp. Um, shortest preseason in NBA history. So the sooner we made those guys feel comfortable and a part of this, that was going to help us. And I think since day one, uh, all of Faku's teammates, new and old, respect the hell out of him because of how hard he played. Uh, he didn't back down from anybody. You know, a lot of times you bring new players in, they try to be nice. And Faku actually asked the question. He goes, listen, when I was in Real Madrid, I was going against guys like you know, Sergio Rodriguez and Sergio Yule, and I would get after them. And they didn't like me all the time because in practice, I was pushing them. He goes, here in the NBA, is it different? Should I, should I not be as aggressive or push these guys? And I said, no, please push Jamal Murray, push Monte Morris. I want you to make their lives hell every day because that is only going to help them and you and us moving forward. Uh, and so he earned the respect of his teammates right away. Um, this has long been a dream of Faku's. You know, I mean, he, he had great success at home. He had great success over in Madrid. Uh, but it, it was his dream to play in the NBA. So he brings his wife and his daughter over here in a new country. But um, it was a really easy transition. And I think guys like Nicola, another foreign player here, took him under his wing. And uh, I think it was a really quick adjustment to making Denver his home. And, uh, you know, obviously, Faku has got his own fan club, rightfully so. Uh, and hopefully he continues to play at the level that he's playing at. All right. That'll do it. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you.